Never better, man. How are you? Good, good. So your friend is Jordan, huh? Yeah, yeah. Long time, actually. I was hey. thinking about that the other day. Uh, when I when I met him, he definitely wasn't on the path that he is now. So, yeah, no. it's the past two years, he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, cool. Yeah, I, I met him just downtown Eau Claire here, just out one night, and he just I was wearing a cowboy hat, so he stopped me and gave me his car. And sure enough, we're both musicians, so we got connected. Yeah, that's sick. That yeah. definitely sounds like him too. He's uh. He's great at connections, but if you're wearing a cowboy hat, that's probably a pretty fast track to connect with them. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I'm, I'm just looking to talk to people, kind of interview slash podcast, just kind of for fun, because I like talking to people, and uh, he sent me your way. He said, you're a really interesting guy. I mean, I don't know how to take that, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that sounds super cool. I, I love that concept. That's that's always fun. Yeah. I'm, uh, I've definitely enjoyed just random conversations more than just about anything else in the world, so... Working as a, I worked as a bartender for ages, so just you know that small talk concept or like that bar talk, like I I really I really like that. I dig that. Where were you bartender at? Um, oh man, I was at uh, the Milwaukee Burger in Eau Claire for the longest time. Um, bartender at a place back home in Minnesota as well. Um, you ever been to Galloway Grill in uh, in Eau Claire? No. It's a it's a spot. <laughs> it's a, like a, like a like a breakfast dive kind of thing. But I were I bartended there for a while too. Rock on. That's cool. Yeah, and you went to school here in Eau Claire? I did, yep. For how long? Uh, four years. Um, didn't come away with the degree, unfortunately, after the four years, but I was there for almost uh, right on the right on the money, actually. I think it was full eight semesters. So. Awesome. What were you going for? Anything? Yeah, I was going for journalism. Well, I, I started off um, going to be a teacher, realized real quick that that wasn't for me changed my mind on that after probably about three weeks um but then after that i started going for journalism um emphasis in uh in photography and communications i think um didn't scratch the itch that i that i wanted you know like it, it didn't it was not going to get me to the the place i wanted to be at and then when covid rolled around everything went online and i wasn't enjoying school anyway so i was like all right we're just gonna we're gonna leave this and uh and just try to try to make it doing something else. So, rock on. Yeah, cool. man. Well, um, I can, I can start recording here, and if you mind, if you don't mind, when we finish yeah. up, I'll, I'll throw this online. Hopefully, promote some of what you're doing. And go for it, man. Yeah, sick. So you're in the photography. What's your What's your platform of choice? Uh, just YouTube for the long form video, and then I splice it up and throw it on Instagram, TikTok. You know anything else that I'm running on? Yeah. So that's yeah. sweet. Let's see how it turns out. Good deal. I like it. Yeah. Um, so journalism and photography, you've been doing it for a while? Yeah. Um, journalism was never really the, uh, the goal. Um, it was just kind of an ends to a mean. You know, I saw myself shooting sports because I had a degree in journalism or, or something like that. So I knew where I wanted to get. I didn't know how I was going to get there. And journalism seemed like the easiest path to do that. But my, uh, my photography journey, or if you want to call it that, I hate using words like that. It sounds it just is. too it's, it's a process but, for sure. Right. My, my experience with photography has been a lot longer than I think I think it has been, you know? I mean, I, uh, I first bought a camera when I got to Eau Claire, actually. Um, and I started going on, like, camping trips and things like that. And I thought to myself, man, I really wish I could have, like, a, just a camera to remember some of these things. Um, and then I, so I, I bought my cheap little point-and-shoot camera and then went and studied abroad in Australia and budgeted too well. So, <laughs> so by the end of the... I don't, probably about three quarters of the way through the trip, I had some extra cash and I bought like a, a nicer DSLR. It was a, a Nikon D750 and um, just started going nuts, like learning everything I possibly could. I must have watched more YouTube videos than days of class I went to on photography for <laughs> the the years after that. Even today, like I, I still get fed so many YouTube camera, uh, even, even just like reviews and things like that. But... Um, yeah, from there, it just kind of took off. I got home and realized I didn't really have any qualifications on jobs or anything like that. I could always work in the service industry, but I knew I didn't want to do that forever. And I had this expensive camera that I realized I could make some cash with. Um, so I started taking photos of just anything that would come my way. I've done a lot of, um, like street style stuff personally, kind of, a I don't know what you want to call it, like a, a artistic documentary style like everyday everyday life type of thing or? yeah 
Yeah, with a lot of 35 millimeter film. Um, Eau Claire was great for that. Eau Claire inspired me in a major way to kind of document the, the life that was happening around me because it's such an awesome place. I think about it often. It's uh, for, for being the size it is, there's a lot of important things that happen there. My, uh, my girlfriend's actually a reporter in town and she's doing a story on a Ukrainian woman right now. Obviously that's kind of a tense situation and, yeah. and there was a, a whole thing that went down with, uh, with the Russian ballet in town. And she, she said that this is the, the first performance by this national ballet or international ballet where they changed the name of their ballet because of international controversy. And oh, wow. it, in my mind, it's just crazy that that's happening in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, that, of all places. But the place yeah. takes action and inspires a lot of important things. So I'd, I'd be really interested in that story because it's an yeah. unrelated team who tours and travels in the U.S., I assume, or? Yeah, I don't I, I don't really know a lot about the, the team itself, but just the story that uh, her name's Phoebe, that she was telling me is is incredible. So. I'll, uh, I'll have to make sure I send that your way once it comes out. I would really love know. to see that. That'd be super. Here, let me yeah. grab my cameras quick. One second, I'll show you. What I can yeah, do. go for it, man. We got this right here. Ooh, and what do we got? Little Polaroids as well. So I have a, uh, you got me thinking about it because I'm in this similar situation of I shot on this old Polaroid for a long time. There we go. Super classic. And you got it at a thrift store for like 10, 20 bucks um, and did that for a long time. And then finally this summer, I had some extra cash, kind of like you were saying. And I bought right. a, a Rebel T7i. There just you go. Just to point and shoot and just get into it. Um, and so I guess my first qu question for you is, what did you start learning once you picked up that that first, you know, decent camera? You know, where'd you oh, go? Man. What did you pick up? How did you, what was that process for you then? Yeah. So, oh man, that's a tough one. I know that right away, the first video I saw, or the first, like, you just bought a camera, what now? Uh, piece of media said, put it into manual mode and don't take it out until you know how to do an exposure triangle. You don't know how to, or until you know how to, you know, work with the camera to get the image that you want. Because at the end of the day, if you sit in auto and just point and shoot, it's probably not going to get you where you want to be. And um, and I live by that for probably the entire first year I had a camera. I don't think I put my my old uh, Nikon into into auto mode or program mode until six seven months after I bought it. Um, and that was probably the most valuable thing that I did in my entire photography career. After that, I did kind of lean into it when I started shooting some film too. Um, I started, I got really interested in film after I was kind of, kind of shown my, my grandpa's old film photo collection. Um, it's kind of a, a unique story. I, I can send you a link to that too. A buddy of mine in school did a little, a uh, little video piece about that, but I can send that your way too. Um, but film is, is so unique because you can't turn up your ISO and you don't have auto settings. You just, you kind of have one chance to make it work. And if you're not familiar with your camera and you don't have that exposure triangle locked down, you're gonna you're gonna miss the shot, miss the opportunity. Um, so I, I think for me the most important thing starting out was just the basics, and that came from a lot of people telling me that that's the way to do it. So, wow, um, super helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, learn honestly, learn what learn how shutter speeds work more than anything else. You can do some really incredible stuff working with little shutter speed changes and and all that. Like capturing like a sports shot, something moving pretty quickly, you can change it to the right point where it captures that movement like perfectly type of thing. Yeah, definitely, and and, and there's a lot of applications for it too. Like I don't know, you follow me on Instagram, right? Yep, I just I just followed you a couple days ago. I'm looking at yeah your stuff. Just the other day, I posted like a photo set like of my kitchen while I was making breakfast. Oh yeah. Um, and I, I there was this one shot I was shooting it like I don't know oh, a thirteenth yeah. of a second or something, a fifteenth of a second or something like that. Yeah. I got like. Ah, uh, go back a few. It's the other one. Uh, oh, okay, I got you. And then you. scroll through a little bit. There's a black and white shot. Oh but, yeah, yeah. Fifteenth of a second, you get that the 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 streams of yeah, yeah, man. But Very cool. As far as creative applications go, you can do more with shutter speed than probably, you know, aperture or uh, or ISO. Well, actually, I'll pull it up just on my my end of Zoom. Um, I'm not sure if you'll see it, but. The recording, I'll pick it up so I can pull over my second. Yeah. Uh, 
Josh Olson. Yeah, that's right. Very cool. Yeah, shutter speed. I've always I was uh, trying to capture a jujitsu match the other day. There's a pretty mm -hmm. moderate to slow, you know, sport. It's more like wrestling. It's not sprinting, running, throwing a, a football or anything. And even then, the sh auto shutter speed is what I was using. Just wouldn't quite capture unless they were literally holding in a position, you know. Right. So it was, surprised me. The shutter speed was too slow. I assume. Dude, shooting combat sports is so hard. It, it, it doesn't have the pace that you'd think would make it difficult to do. Mm -hmm. But at any given time, there's like three different levels to the thing. You've got whatever your background is, you have one competitor, you have the other competitor. And it's so hard to like match them up, especially with the way that they rotate. Like I'm at the point now where w w I've shot a lot of wrestling and I just set a single focus point and then move my, like physically move my camera around to match the focus point with wherever their face is rather than try to like let autofocus track. Cause it's, with the two different planes, it's impossible to, to let autofocus really work the way it should. Interesting. I'll look into yeah. that. Do you, I'm sure jujitsu is exactly the same way too. Yeah. Do you, do you use a stabilizer or anything? Like you said you focus on one point and then is it something that like you move the camera around on a, like a gyro, you know, what's the, no, I literally, what do you mean? like I just, I had my camera right here conveniently, Perfect. but I was yeah. like, like keep my eye locked to it and then just move with the focus point and move with the action. It sounds like really self-explanatory or really sure. simple, but like when you have just that one focus point locked down, you, have, you really have a, a lot more precision with it, I guess. And what's that called? So could I look it up and find out kind of how to do that on a, my Rebel T7i type of thing? Or is there a category? Depends on how many focus points you got. Um, I think that the, the Rebel only has focus points set in the middle of your sensor. So I don't know that you'd be able to isolate something on the far end. I was lucky. I bought a Nikon Z6 not too long ago. And this, I can go edge to edge with my focus point. So I can literally like rule of thirds frame up in the top corner and then just use that to track a face or something like that. But I think the, with the Rebel, with the Rebel, I would definitely recommend if you're going to be shooting combat sports, like for the sake of having a good composition, move your focus point as far to one side as you can so that your subject isn't center weighted every single time. Huh. Interesting. I think I know what you mean, but I'll have to look into that. That sounds super yeah. helpful if I can figure it out. As I was saying that, I was like, this pro this makes no, zero. No, it's totally cool. If I, if I had to visualize it, I would not be doing well. But That's good to know. I can definitely look that up. I get some pictures sure. of Jordan, too. Yeah. He, he used to be, he used to be look, a, look a lot different. Wow, what a guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's cool. What's your, so have you only done wrestling for combat sports, or have you thought, um, have there been opportunities to do other ones? No, I've been trying to infiltrate <laughs> um, like the jujitsu. I just moved to Columbus, Ohio, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's a pretty heavy jujitsu scene here. And at this point, I'm honestly thinking that my in is going to be going in and training and then just like having a camera with me, you know, not yeah. leading a photographer. But I, I think I can do it. I think probably a couple months here and I'll try to infiltrate the uh, jujitsu scene. That's that's what I started doing. I was going too too specifically trained, and then I just happened yeah. to bring my camera along with and started taking cool pictures of, of all the guys rolling. And right. I think they appreciated that, and I brought it to our competition a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So, Combat sports are so neglected. Like I think about NFL players. They, at any given time, could have a selection of hundreds of hundred, thousands of photos to post. And you can have, like... Jordan Burroughs winning the Olympics, he had maybe three options, you know, or, or like high level jujitsu guys. Like who do they, what, what kind of media do they have hanging around them shooting daily? It's a, it's a more niche, niche right. group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long do you have, by the way? I don't want to be keeping, you know, I said, you know, anything from 10, 15 minutes, if you've got a while to talk. Well, I, got, I got nothing going on today. I, I have to go and like buy some eggs later on today, but that's Sick. literally all I got. So I was just rushing back from Aldi's uh, about 20 minutes okay. ago before I there got out of here. How's the weather up there in Columbus? We're getting a bunch of ice and rain today. So since I moved here, it's been just cloudy and sad and depressing and just like quintessential Ohio. And then today I woke up and checked the weather and it's supposed to be 75 and sunny all day long. Oh, so glorious. I'm a, I got a little patio. I'm about to like go sit out on my patio and get a little tan. Love that. Yeah. What uh, back to photography? What are your yeah. what's your ultimate goals? Like, what are you? Oh, man. you can just envision like where you could be. Just be like, is it just taking a few photos that are worth 
couple thousand dollars each that just can pay your bills for the, you know, right. being a photographer for a celebrity, you know, what's that look like to someone who's doing photography full time? Yeah. Um, I'll give you two. I have my, my artistic photography goals or my more conceptual photography goals. And then I have my career photography goals. Um, as far as the artistic side goes, um, I actually right down here, I have film binders. I have, uh, I have all my negatives just kind of like laid out, um, by year. And th this is literally just like the story of my last four or five years of life. Um, and so my, my overall artistic photography goal is that someday I'm going to be asked about my life when I was in college or my life immediately after college, or right now I'm working for a wrestling company. Somebody's going to ask me, Hey Jake, how was life when you were working for Rudis? And I, I'm going to just be able to hand off these books and say like, enjoy, this is, this is what it was, that's you know? Cool. So as, as, that's, that's kind of where I'm at as far as artistic, um, but career, I have, my goal for next year, next year I want to shoot either an NFL game or the Olympics. Not next year, but whenever the next Olympic cycle happens. Like short term, I want to shoot the highest level sports, you know? Um, I think that's completely doable. I, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that I'll be able to make that happen. Um, and I guess I haven't really thought much further past that. Um, I do a lot of work with digital advertising right now. Um, and it's kind of taking the camera out of my hands a little bit and putting some more emphasis on the distribution. But I think I would like professionally to get to a point where I can continue to have photography as a high level hobby and, uh, and never really have to make it high stakes. So. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. You said you have a book full of negatives. Did you, what do those look like? Are those printed out like little strips or what, or are they just, no. So they're all my, all my, like my developed film from the last few years. So the, the so. actual photos you mean? Yeah. So like right here, I've got 2020 chopped up yep. some film boxes for some reason. It's feeling really creative that day, but if we, I'll just like pop a page. Up. Yeah. Go for it. Just to get an idea of what this, this thing looks like that you're very proud of, which is cool. Yeah. One of them got rained on actually. I left my window open. So now there's like some cool watermarks in some of them. Oh, 2020 is tough, man. It's either me sitting at home or me like in the early parts of the year at a bar. But yeah, so you can check these out. Right, these okay, are that's actually, what I thought, yeah. Yeah, these are actually from Water Street. I think this is the Pio. But yeah, I got just photos of, of everybody I would see out at the bars, things like that. Um, and that, like I said, this is like years worth of stuff. And do you when have... Developed, Sorry, do you have developed copies of those too then? Or no, how does that work in no. photography? Do you just save those and then when you're ready, go and develop those in the end? Or Yeah, so I, I have a digital scanner. I haven't really had the, the resources to make printing every photo possible. Um, so I just scan them uh, digitally and then print from a print shop or however I do that. But um, I don't have prints of all of them. But real quick, I'm gonna pull up one more thing. Yeah, please as do. Long as, I, I live in a nice little studio apartment, so everything is centrally located. Cool. Okay, so there are modern ways to scan just little negative strips into just a full, you know, six by four, you know, um, type photo or? Yeah, so it would, it would scan it just uh, digitally into like a two by three ratio or two, uh, two to three ratio. Um, and then from there, you can take that digital file and print it. But I don't know if you ever heard of freeprints.com. Mm -mm. Um, shameless plug, they are like my go-to, just cheap and easy print shop. So I have like, check this out. These are yeah. from, this is last year. So I don't print everything, but I print most things. Um, and doing it that way is so nice because I'm not worried about the quality on these. I want, I want just something that I can write a label on the back of and, and, and hold on to, you know? I, I, I did the same thing with Shutterfly. I have stacks of every fall, spring, and summer for the past about four years at this point. Yeah. And yeah, so that's cool to see someone else doing that too. I love that. Let's see what we got. Dude, I will, I will go off forever on the value of hard copy photos. You oh, know? I love it. I love it. Digital art, is, <laughs> I just had this conversation with a bunch of my, my uh, coworkers yesterday. One of them was like, oh man, I got a new phone and I lost all my photos. And in my head, I just like, 
like internal scream, you know, like that's yeah. so valuable, like that the sentimental value there. But so I literally have like stuff like this. It's just a shot from Mount Rushmore on uh, Ectochrome film. Or like, it's a weird combination of like personal stuff and then like artistic, oh, some wow. of that like street documentary style stuff. I don't think I have. I don't have this. What my photos would be? Yeah, print your photos, everybody. Print your photos. Absolutely. When yeah. I was doing those little Polaroids, I have stacks and stacks of even just tiny little like one inch, two inch Polaroids. Yeah. Polaroids are cool because it's instant. Like this, there are like, I think there are three steps to making this happen. You shoot, scan, print. But Polaroid, you literally just point and then bam, mm -hmm. immediately done. Makes it a lot more accessible. Do you have any, I suppose you obviously take photos for memorable moments, but do you have some, what's your num top memorable moments that you've, you're so happy that you've captured or was a really cool experience to capture specifically anything that stands out in your whole collection absolutely um so i have one photo i'm gonna pull it up on my phone and just show you yeah please do i got a really cool chance to shoot some photos at the 2020 wrestling world team trials and i've known for a while that i wanted to work with wrestling you know i have a, a lot of history there and i think it's just a really awesome community and I have fully accredited this photo to being the majority of wow. the reason why I, <laughs> you know, got the job I have or the reason my career has kind of progressed the way it has. Um, you didn't really, that wasn't a great view of it, but no, that's totally Jordan Burroughs, you know, Jordan Burroughs, he's a, you know, Olympic champ, six time world champ. He, he went and reposted that the next morning and it, it, I think that really. And you had taken that photo? Yeah, yeah, it really legitimized my career in uh, in wrestling media a little bit, or wrestling photography. And then, how did you um, capture that specifically? What camera? What you know? Do you remember your shutter speed? Like, do you have all these details like that now that you've been doing it? I don't have it exact, but I can tell you just based on the way it looks that it was at f one point eight from uh, eighty five millimeter prime lens, um, and I think I was at about one two hundred fiftieth of a second because. So I, this this always cracks me up. Uh, I'm terrible at math. I, I cannot do like <laughs> algebra or like proofing math, things like that. But I'll just tell you. So like, I remember this exact moment. I was sitting there. I saw him walking off the mat and pulling straps off his singlet. And in that moment, I like, while I was running over to get the shot of him walking off the mat, took my ISO down to 100 because I wanted the highest quality possible. I brought my shutter speed down to 1 250th and brought my aperture up to f4 so that I wouldn't miss, potentially miss focus by hitting like his nose or something like that. And I did that in the span of like seven seconds while running over to get the shot of him walking off the mat. Meanwhile, I failed college math like three times, but. I love that. I have also retaken and I'm taking my share of math courses and I totally get that. Here, I'm, I have that photo on my screen. I'll, I'll show it closer. Um, yeah. There, uh, that, yeah, that photo of, of Jordan. Wow, that is a clean photo. Thanks. These tattoos and on the shoulder right. and everything else. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Otherwise, um, I shot some film photos at my mom's wedding that are really, really important to me. Those are some other ones that I feel especially proud of. Less career, more personal, um, obviously, but that's another moment that I'm really glad I had a camera for. So. Absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm still looking at that one. That That's cool. I love how you described the way you flipped all those. those right. Settings. It's even more fun with film because it's, it's like actual hard switches and things like that. This one was on digital obviously, but I think about, um, I haven't used a light meter shooting film in like three years. So I basically just take a look at the light and then infer my settings based on where I know I'm shooting. And like thinking about light in that way is something that I wouldn't be able to do if I relied on a light meter for a very long time. So it's, it's hard to describe the way that that thought process happens, but very cool. Yeah. Rock I probably made, that was probably the most, no, I love, I love hearing it. It just shows how dynamic, these can be that you miss mm -hmm. and you just click oh auto mode click 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 which obviously right. I, I do all the time but i'm into learning more about it right 
Uh, I'd be inter interested in seeing your what you think about martial arts if you start training jujitsu or something. Yeah, you I think it'd be a lot of fun. Course. I don't really, I don't know a thing about it. I got, I work with a, a guy who does some jujitsu training right now, and he was like explaining the rule set to me with like advantages and stuff like that. And it sounds super interesting. It, it sounds even more interesting to shoot, honestly. Okay. I want to shoot an MMA fight. I think or a UFC fight. I think that'd be fantastic. I think that'd be awesome. I agree. That would be sick. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just got into UFC, just watching them. You know, as I started mm -hmm. like six months ago, started training. Um, for fun and it's yeah once you're doing it and watching it the whole world seems to shift because all of a sudden you can apply one to the other right and probably after looking through the lens at wrestling i think you pick it up oh yeah makes sense to you yeah oh absolutely i mean it's a lot of the same concepts are you talking about shooting it or actually competing or training in it uh training it i suppose yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of the same concepts like passing guard is basically just like I don't know, improving your position on top or things, or things yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sick. Yeah. Uh, how old are you, by the way? How old? Yeah, uh, how old 24. Okay, 24. 23. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Getting old, man. That's all right. Oh, you got some pictures from downtown Eau Claire here. There's that guy with the uh, the guitar and the little zoom, 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 you know. Oh, yeah, the little slide guitar guy? Slide guitar, yeah. And slide, yep. Dude, wait. I think I actually took that with Jordan. Yeah, it's right down. That is crazy. He's, he's always playing it. So him and I, Jordan and I worked construction together a few oh, years back doing, we were building a house in Eau Claire and we went out for his 21st birthday and ended up just standing there watching this dude play slide guitar while pretty good and lit up for a while. I'll pull up Time. that picture here. I saw that and I was like, I totally recognize that guy. I'd probably give him a few dollars too. Oh yeah, no doubt. So we have this guy with the sly guitar. Uh, here, I will scroll through. Hmm. Well, I don't know where I went. No worries. Just picture a guy with a big beard and a slide guitar, and you're pretty yeah. much there. Yeah, basically. Very cool. Oh, there it is. Boom. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I've always, I need, I've always wanted to buy a slide uh, for a guitar. I don't know if you need a different one or a steel strings or something to play. Uh huh. But yeah, you said you're a musician. What's what's that about? What do you what do you play? Uh, I got I play acoustic guitar now and harmonica. I've got you get to get to guitar here and harmonica here. <laughs> Nice. Um, and, but I, I grew up playing drums, and that was my okay. thing. And then coming to college, I didn't, didn't bring the set with me. I just brought some sticks and a practice pad, and, and mostly just picked up voice and guitar for fun, kind of like Jordan did. It seemed like about two, yeah. years, two years ago, picked it up, just started doing it for fun. He's obviously t touring and gigging now. Right. Uh, which uh, I think actually I have a gig planned with him this summer sometime. Dude, um, hell yeah. In Green Bay. So yeah. it totally He's worked out. He picked up a lot of momentum. I'm stoked for him. Yeah, that's awesome. And... Your photography of him can only help, I'd imagine. Right. Yeah, we had some good portrait sessions really early on. I know we got another one in the, you know, scheduled at some point. We got to get that done. Um, but yeah, no, I've had a great experience shooting uh, portraits of him. Um, it's always really cool to get an opportunity to use your talents to help somebody that you know is maybe not in the exact same situation, but in something similar. Like our careers progressed obviously in different paths kind of similarly um between my photos and his music and so at a certain point like we were able to sorry i got a <laughs> firing going on yeah, window. That. we were able to kind of like meet up and collaborate and help each other out and i think that my photos of him that he used for his scheduling helped him just about as much as they helped me. I mean, I, I put out some really cool stuff and I got a lot, of, uh, they were received really well by people that follow me. I'm going to close my door. Yeah, go quick. for it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's annoying. It's going off. All right, never mind. It's off. Oh, yeah, there you go. What's the most challenging part then um, of photography? What, is it kind of what you explained earlier, the sliding and just making sure you're getting the frame right without the auto or is it something else entirely? That's the easiest part once you get the hang okay. of it. Oh man. Oh no. That's, All right. That's one yeah, time. No worries. Take your time.
But yeah, most difficult part. I'm going to need a quick second on no, this one. No, go, go for it. Think about it. Because um, in general, people think, oh, photography, you know, just point and shoot, you know, lighting, camera, lenses, all that. Yeah. Uh, but the way you've explained it, it seems like a totally different world in a good way. I mean, it is. It's it's huge. And I, I think that I would say that that's probably the most difficult part. Finding your style in a world where literally anything is capable in terms of photography. Like with your T7, you could take a shot out my window and look up a tutorial on how to edit it on YouTube and edit it exactly like that and look at it and be exceptionally proud of it and then move on to the next video and watch that and edit it exactly the same way and be really proud of it. And then the next one and the next one and the next one. There's so much input into the way that a photo should look today, um, whether it's coming from people that you know, people that inspire you as artists, that sort of thing. It's very hard to find your own style in today's photography world, I suppose. And I don't know what, what I, I don't know how to define style in that sense, but like it took me three to four years to really settle on this kind of medium high contrast black and white style of photography that I return to a lot every time I'm a little bit uncomfortable or, or, or out of my element. I go and I edit something to have heavy contrast and black and white and, and, and shoot for the highlights. And I, there's a whole bunch of different ways I would describe my own style. But like I said, that took me three to four years to find and really narrow in on to the point where I can use it as direction when I'm shooting. So do you ever get writer's block when, when shooting or photographer photographer's block where you're like, I, I got nothing. There's nothing I, I do when I'm, you know, I do when I'm editing all the time, never really when I'm shooting, shooting's crazy because like there's a car out there that I could go and take 10,000 different photos of from every angle in every lighting situation with every lens. But then when you go to edit it, it's always harder to make it look the way you want it to than it, than you'd think it would be. So I, I would definitely say that I get more writer's block or creative block in editing than anything else, mm -hmm. especially with digital photography, because then you airdrop it to your phone and it looks like absolute garbage after going from your computer screen. Honestly, film takes so many variables out of photography. Like if my colors look like shit, it's probably because I developed and it was too hot or like my, or, or I, I scanned it poorly or like my in, invert uh, software didn't work the right way. But there's like, you know, it, it takes so much of that variable out of like the editing process. Cool. What's your philosophy? Do you have a philosophy on lenses? Uh, is it more expensive the better, or it's more you that does the work, or angle, lighting, yeah. settings? Um, if I was recommending a lens, or if I was telling somebody what lens they should buy next, <coughs> excuse me, buy next, I would literally just say, um, Find the closest to 50 millimeter with the widest aperture you can find and don't buy anything else until you're confident with that. Um, so my first lens I bought was a 50 millimeter 1.8 and I shot like four months worth of a trip to Australia on that before I ended up upgrading. But um, it's kind of the same, same way that I emphasize the basics when you're learning the camera functions. Like if you're not good with a 50 millimeter lens, you're not going to be good with a 70 or with a 24 to 70, you know, that's cause then you have 24, six, then you have like 36 other <laughs> millimeters worth of focal length to worry about. So I would definitely recommend starting with something like that. And then from there, obviously you can kind of expand and grow, but I, I definitely stick with primes. Um, I shoot with a Leica M5 for film and I have a 40 millimeter 1.4 on there that has never come off the camera. And that's one of my favorite lenses of all time. I can shoot it, you know, in the dead of night. If I have some highlight, I can shoot at 30th of a second and up 1.4 and it looks good. So, wow. Yeah. I've always struggled with nighttime photography. I mean, just yeah. my amateur experience. I'm like, Oh, that's dark. I I'm having a hard time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> that's great. Do you have any, uh, short term projects that you want to promote or have me shout out? Anything that you're working on right now that you want to tell people about? Oh, man. Um, I've got a zine in the works about last summer. Um, oh, well, what's that? I've been a lot. Yeah, so just like a, I hate the term. I hate the term zine so much, and I hate myself for saying it. But it, imagine like a, like a casual magazine. Um, oh, sure. Okay. Really, 
yeah, usually more, you know, photo heavy, less copy, um, meant to be easily, to, easy, to, easy to distribute and cheap basically. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about this, like concept of this whole last year with things being shut down and all that. And, um, and I've been having some, I don't know what you want, if you'd call it guilt, but like been having a lot of thoughts about the way that my career didn't really progress at all in 2020 and the majority of that was due to the own the choices i made during that time um but on the back end of it i have a lot of cool photos of me having a great time at bars and just kind of like just kind of hanging out um it's kind of a, a heavy concept i guess but i'm going to i'm working i got a zine in the works um that'll get put out more aggressively as it kind of comes together but any yeah. specific publisher or company you're with that? I'm not no. sure how that works. No, I'm just going to print whoever can do it cheapest. Okay, cool. So it's yeah, you your it, own. It, your yeah. Own work. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. I remember when they all sent us home in 2020 from college, mm -hmm. and it was like the last day of classes. So it's just funny you said the choices you made ended up in the bars. You know, there was no school right. for like a week before we all went, you know, went home. It was, it was just for college kids especially it was a really unique time yeah yeah i don't regret it by any means that's kind of the uh the concept of this scene that i want to put out is it's like a like an appreciation for the year of my life that i didn't really have to do anything and it was completely okay but at the same time kind of resenting the lack of progress that i made during that time yeah that's kind of the sentiment i from what i remember for, uh, yeah. most college kids kind of felt we all just kind of oh there's just nothing to do, and that's okay. Yeah, and right. And that's never happened before, and who knows if that'll happen again. That's mm. really unique. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to put it into photos, but I'm a, I'm, you know, it's a project that I've had in the, on the mind for a little while. Cool, that's awesome. I'm really excited for that. Send that our way. Um, or yeah, I'm sure absolutely. I'm following you, so I'll see it if, if and when you get that finished. Yeah, we got a. I'm working for Rudis, um, Rudis Wrestling. And we're putting on a huge match, um, huge event in like two weeks now. And I haven't been able to get any like personal stuff done since since I got here because that is taking up a lot of time. But sure, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be nuts. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see those photos. Judging by For sure, man. just what I've seen on Instagram, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> really yeah, I haven't even posted the majority of stuff I shot last summer too. So it's gonna be a like a editor's cut, editor's cut of my Instagram. Is there a shortage of content in photography? Like, you know, with music, I'm writing all the time, but what you what I put out is going to be just just maybe the mm -hmm. little bit I think is right that I can do. Is it the same way for photography, or do you market yourself differently, or do you just say I got so many photos and just start? Yeah, putting them out. Um, it depends, I guess. I have a, another, right before I left Eau Claire, I wanted to put on a physical show because I'd never done that before. And the theme was going to be the in-between frames because I think about a roll of film. There's 36 frames in a roll of film and I usually post two to three of them. That means that there are 33 things that are outtakes or 33 things that are personal or 33 things that I just don't feel translate well to Instagram but might translate well to being a hard copy. Um, I wouldn't say there's any shortage of things to post on social media. If anything, I have, there's a shortage of outlets for the rest of the content to make it, a, wow. you know, that would be appropriate. Interesting. Instagram is so commercial now. I would feel very weird about posting the things that are important to me personally on my photography account. Like took photos of my mom's wedding and yeah, I post them on Instagram because they look cool, but I don't think that that was the best method for them. Interesting. Yeah. Have you found any social media platforms that you do like the most for photography, specifically for higher quality? I dude, I love Twitter just because it's so high res. Like Twitter doesn't compress your photos and they look so good. Like if nobody else ever likes them or I don't get any retweets or anything like that, I don't really care because I can scroll back through my feed and they look very good. Interesting. But, I've never, never heard of that. Wow. Yeah. No, it's crazy. It, it's, it's night and day, the difference. Like photos look so good on Twitter. <laughs> that's hilarious i was not expecting that yeah. at all at all whatsoever yeah. that's so random it's not the best platform for sharing them but it's definitely the best platform for looking at them wow okay yeah. that's cool to know i never would have thought that i'm very surprised right cool yeah 
Dude, I gotta see some of your photos sometime. You gotta send some stuff my oh, way. Sure, geez. Um, even the the jujitsu stuff. I think that'd be cool to see. You know, I can send you the link to, uh, just basically all 150 photos I took, basically that I saved. Yeah. Of our competition, two a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I'll send you that on Google Drive, so I'm not sure how they compress and there's action Google shots. Google Drive, good actually. Okay. Yeah, Google Drive's not bad. Um, uh, on my Instagram, the ones I posted were ones. There's my one post about the competition. Were ones that were taken on my photo, or my mm -hmm. camera. Uh, I I wouldn't say they're anything special. They're more capturing the moment than they are being a clean, hey, cut, clean cut shot. That's what it's all about. You ever heard of uh, Henry Cartier Bresson? No, who's that? He's a, a French photographer that coined the term the decisive moment, and um, obviously he is. Um, like one of the most most important photographers to the art form ever, um, but a lot of his photos are like blurry or they'll they'll be not the highest quality or the best concept. But you can tell that there's a lot of thought going into capturing the decisive moment. So I I would look him up well, if I were yeah, you. Yeah, what's his it, name? Here I'll type him in on Instagram right now. Yeah, uh, Cartier Bresson, uh, C A R T I E R dash Bresson, B R E S S O N. B R E. S S O N, yeah. Henry Cartier person. Interesting. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Okay, here I'll, I'll pull them at least on my screen. Yeah. Um, Anytime I start to feel a little self-conscious about the quality of my film negatives or like the uh, the visual part of my the photos that I think are that lend themselves more to capturing a moment, I just like go back and look at his stuff and realize like that's the same thirty-five millimeter film and the same motion blur and it, it's just it's the the decisive moment that really makes it important. And so makes they're they're the the pinnacle shots, just kind of done averagely. Is that kind of kind of? I mean, for the most of that was just because of the time that he existed. Oh, like, sure. Your max shutter speed was a five hundredth of a second, so so you're going to get some blur. When did he When did he live? Thing. When was it? What's uh, thirties? Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be totally off, but that feels about right. Wow. Okay. So yeah, just an early photographer. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love old photos. Let me see when. 1947. Damn. That's what oh, yeah, he lived. Okay. I was right. I was I was within the time frame. But That's beautiful. Yeah, all black and yeah. white. What area of the world are traveling? France, I believe. France. Cool. I'll spend some time looking at that. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks for showing me. Another that. guy. Ooh, another one you should definitely look at. I have a. I collect photo books too. Um, check out Louis Forer. Forer, this guy. Okay. I had to buy his book to see the majority of his photos. They're not really online, but his stuff's incredible. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, I'm sending you on your way with no, like. No, that's okay. I was just gonna see if I can pull anything up. I'll I'll check that out yeah. too. Thank that one guy on Instagram though. Great, love it. Totally gonna look at that more. Go for it. Um, I think I don't have any more questions. You've given me people of what you're into and all that. Uh, yeah. Do you know anyone else I should talk to that I'd be interested in? I mean, it could be any subject. I really don't have any preference. Uh, martial arts. Uh, yeah. You know, the workforce, blue collar welding. You know, I literally, I mean, anything. Music. You should. Uh, my good, good friend, Adam Lucast is the biggest Minnesota sports fan I've ever met. And he's actually, um, starting as a co-host on a podcast, not too long from now. That's just entirely about Minnesota sports. Um, he'd be a great guy to talk to. And also he's, <clears throat> he's very eloquent. I don't know. He's a, he's a really good speaker and he will talk for days. So cool. especially about his, Minnesota sports. Do you have his contact info? Absolutely, I can send cool. it over yeah, to you. Yeah, go ahead and go and text me that. And uh, I mean, if you have, I think of anyone else too, it can be more than one person, one or two people. Yeah. Just awesome that just can chat about whatever they're into. Yeah. Um, no, Adam and I have had plenty of bar talk style conversations, so he, he'll definitely uh, give you the content you're looking for. So. Love it, love it. So yes, yeah, send me his information and I'm trying to think. I suppose that's it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I got nothing else. I'm. I don't know. I feel like I could talk for days about photography stuff, so I have to cut myself off at a certain point. That's okay. You know, we can talk again sometime as I look into yeah. it and come with more questions, just more cool topics, and I'd love to hear more about it. 
Right. Well, I mean, especially once I, I think I, I like what you're doing here, and I think it's obviously got some potential to have a pretty good sized reach. And if at a certain point you want to narrow in on a specific project or like a, a more clear cut concept of photography or, or what I do as a, a photographer, like feel free to reach out again. Absolutely. I would love that. Cool. Uh, go ahead and give any last shout outs or anything um, and before we head off, anything that you want to add on to uh, no rush, you know, I can, yeah. I can edit out. Oh, you're going to, you're going to get my Instagram out there and stuff, right? Get people to start hitting that follow button. Uh, uh, tips for new photographers then. So guys like me who I just got a oh. decent camera or, I mean, that's, that's kind of a good place to leave off then. Cause that's where a majority yeah. of people I feel start end up and maybe even stop progressing is kind of in that starting to mid range. Mm hmm. So if you have nothing uh, else, yeah. do that, I suppose. Switch to manual mode. Don't take it out until you're supremely confident in your manual photography skills. Um, it doesn't matter what you have. If you can take a photo, you can make some amazing art. I shoot on my phone all the time just because it's convenient and honestly looks better than half of the digital cameras that are out there today. Um, and also just be diligent. Be a sponge. Never stop learning about the art. Um, I didn't have to learn about photographers that existed in the forties, but I've drawn a lot of inspiration from them because I have, and, uh, and I couldn't be more thankful for that. So, um, yeah, be a sponge. Don't ever stop learning. Very That's cool. all I got. Rock on. Cool. Uh, yeah, send me that contact information and let me know if I can do anything to help. Yeah, we'll do man. Rock on. Uh, have a good one. Have fun in the sun today. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to try to get that tan going. Cool. All right. All right. I appreciate you. Have, have a good, good day. One. See ya.